What do you get if you cross Kafuzi with a ginger runner and a hint of Earl Grey tea? You get Ed Bud. And today I'm back with a review of the 2019 series of Nike running shoes. So with the new incoming 2020 series of Nike running shoes, what I intend to do today is kind of look at whether each of the releases from last year in 2019 were a hit or a miss. Everyone's getting very excited by the Alpha Fly and the Tempo Next Percent and the Pegasus 37. So I want to have a look at whether there's still really great value to be offered by some of the outgoing releases and also considering that they're going to be probably reduced in price so the runners can pick up some bargains. So I picked up the Pegasus 36 early in June of 2019. I really enjoyed this shoe up to about 13 miles actually. Typically I kind of like the Pegasus line as a kind of easier day or sort of daily trainer. The sweet spot pace wise for me with this one was around about 7 minutes 45 to about 8 minutes per mile. That's about 5 minutes per kilometre or 4 minutes 49 per kilometre. The upper I found to be a real improvement actually over the previous version, the Pegasus 35. In fact, that's a shoe I very recently donated to charity. It still had some good life in it, the upper was fine, there was some decent tread left, and got to give it to some people that need it. So the midsole on this one was obviously the same as the Pegasus 35. It's a little bit more firm, I would suggest. You've got a full length Zoom Air unit in the midsole there, encased. I know a few people have tried to kind of remove it or at least look at it, but I think it's so kind of welded together. It's quite a difficult task. Aside from that same midsole and outsole unit, the upper was changed quite considerably actually. It was much lighter. I think this made it a more versatile shoe. I found the original Pegasus 35 to be quite a warm shoe actually, certainly doing a lot of running with it in the summer of 2018. That tongue alone was made quite a bit thinner. It was quite thick and padded. There was a lot of foam in that tongue on the 35. I think all those tiny sort of differences all added up to making quite a big change really. Actually, I think it was quite a improvement on the 35 in pretty much every way. I found the midsole and outsole unit that they've used on this shoe to be good up to about 250 miles, perhaps pushing up to 300 miles. I think people do find that that Zoom Air unit does start to kind of bottom out. It starts to become a little bit too firm after that. I keep seeing the Pegasus 36 on sale in the UK at the moment for only about £60. I think that's a really good deal for a strong daily trainer that's pretty versatile. You could do all manner of activities in this. I see lots of people actually running races in it locally. Um, non-elite athletes like myself. At that price point, certainly reduced from its initial retail price of around about £100, I think that makes the Pegasus 36 a hit. I think it's a little bit weighty for some people. Not everyone want to race in this type of shoe. I certainly see it as one you can use on a daily basis. It's going to be dependable and you know what you get. It's kind of like eating a meal at a restaurant that you're really familiar with. You know, you kind of go in and you think to yourself, wow, try something different today. You look on the menu, and the Pegasus 36 is there and you think, yep, that's the one for me. I'm going to take it nice and steady with this one. Go with what I know. We've all done that, been to a restaurant and ordered some strange dish and it comes out and you're really underwhelmed. Valentine's Day's just been and I think if there was a shoe that I truly loved over the course of last year, it was the Pegasus Turbo 2. So there are a number of changes from the 35 version. It's kind of weird that they decided to change the, the name convention for this one. It was the Pegasus 35 Turbo before, where this one's just the Pegasus Turbo 2. Let's hope they don't go down that sketches thing of naming convention. It's just really bizarre. I'm not even sure that they understand how it works. So there are a load of differences to the upper on this shoe, made it a much, much better shoe for me personally. I know there's loads of you out there that prefer the Pegasus 35 Turbo. That's fine, I understand why you prefer that, but to me, this is this is a real shh. I can't speak. Words fail me. This is just a great shoe. So I think took this one up to about 123 miles, you know, because I'm a bit OCD. I even used it for some 5K and 10K road races, actually. I think it was back in October time. Dorchester Dash, that was the one. Yeah, I used this uh, very muddy conditions for part of the race. The rest of it was on road and I hit some good speeds actually. I was really proud of my performance that day. I do prefer the upper on this version of the shoe rather than the previous one. I really didn't like that racing stripe at the front. And to me, the Pegasus 35 Turbo, it felt like it was shrinking over time. It was really great when I first got it. When the shoe got wet, I took it out on some quite wet club runs. Uh, when it started to dry, that mesh just seems to sort of get more and more constrictive. 
as time goes on. It's way more accommodating in the tow box due to the fact that that racing stripe wasn't there. And I really like the lacing system actually. I managed to get a superb lockdown with this shoe without even trying. I think I could perhaps blindfold myself and just use one hand and still get a really good lockdown with this one. <laughs> I have to do that actually, we might have to try that. So this shoe was a fantastic go-to kind of option for tempo efforts around about 7 minutes 30 per mile or 4 minutes 40 per kilometer. Slap on the wrist from me, I have forgotten to do the kilometer conversions, I'm very sorry about that. Someone also commented the other day about my weight in stones. Yeah, here in the Shire we use special magic stones to weigh stuff. Also did some interval stuff in this shoe. I think it about 6 minutes 30 per mile, about 4 minutes per kilometre, sort of approximate kind of top speeds in this one. In a weird way, I think the React layer here kind of circumvents the need for the carbon fibre plate. I think it gives it a bit of rigidity. I think if you just had a purely Zoomex midsole that was completely Zoomex, it would just be like a big pillowcase attached to your foot with some twine. The midsole for me didn't develop any problems. I didn't get any of this kind of separation problem here between the two foams. I think Kafuzi's done a super video about that where he got loads and loads of primary and secondary information about that issue. I'll try and throw a card up on the screen for that one. It's a really interesting video. I think it's too many reports to ignore really in terms of that separation of the two foams despite not actually seeing the problem myself. I know Kev Burton, my good buddy, he's got loads of Pegasus turbos and he hasn't had a single problem with any of them. They're all just superb. So I think it's a little bit down to running style on, you know, making sure you perhaps don't kick those shoes off with the back of your foot. I found traction really great in this shoe. Uh, even on that muddy course uh, back in October in Dorchester, I still had great traction, still produced a good result. So I think about £112, this shoe presents really good value. Obviously it was much more retail. I think this one was about 160 something like that. But I think round about £110, well, you just cannot lose. If you're looking for that sort of higher tempo shoe, something superbly cushioned with the magical Zoom X foam, this is the one for you. Though I think if you do go for it and you love it, you've got to be aware that it does appear like they're kind of phasing out this model of the Pegasus. Obviously there's that Tempo Next Percent that's coming in. There also seems to be a Zoomax racing flat as well that I've seen uh, pictures of knocking around on Instagram. So if you can find it, maybe you can hire the Pegasus Turbo too. This one for me, as you can probably tell, is a hit. We're at the halfway point of this video, so it's time for a quick musical interlude. I've been listening to this one recently, ACDC. The old highway to hell. What an iconic cover. Every track on this album's great. They're all high pace. If you're doing some tempo efforts, if you're putting in a really hard shift on a certain session, I think this album's for you. Anything by ACDC, they've always got that kind of driving kind of rhythm, the bass, the guitars, they're kind of like functional. They're not too distorted actually sometimes. They're just kind of powerful. It just feels like energy, doesn't it? I think it transmits through the ears to the legs. It's nice to see a really great kind of inside cover as well on an album. There's loads of cool pictures. And actually Angus Young playing some different guitars rather than his sort of famous iconic SG. And Malcolm Young, super cool Gretsch player. Anyway, ACDC, get some in your life. So the Zoom Fly 3 is a shoe I've waxed lyrical about quite a lot on this channel. I don't want to feel like I'm sort of bashing the shoe. I have had some really great sessions here. It's not all bad. I mean, it's got that obligatory carbon fiber plate that, you know, like every single shoe manufacturer seems to want to mess about with at the moment. But I certainly found it a little bit on the weightier side. It's certainly the weightiest shoe on this comparison today. The upper is really interesting, yet a little bit flawed. This kind of neoprene section through the middle here, I just find that it sort of bunches up as you kind of cinch the shoe laces up and kind of get a decent lockdown. And had all manner of weird problems with that. I think this was kind of aimed at a sort of daily version of the next percent, but it really didn't feel anything like it to me. I think there's far fewer similarities between the Zoomfly 3 and the next percent than there were perhaps between the Zoomfly Flyknit and the Vaporfly 4% flying it. Again, I did have some very successful outings in this, doing some tempo runs. I'm almost sure that the shoe's midsole is really temperature sensitive. It just feels so vastly different to the React that's used on other stuff, um, like on the Infinity run, for example. 
just feels a lot harder and kind of denser. Maybe I could pre-warm the midsole of the shoe as a test. I might try that. Oh, maybe not. How much time do I have? <laughs> Rach Mutt uh, commented on YouTube. I hope that's the correct pronunciation of that. You never really know with kind of internet-based names. People kind of come up with them on the spur of the moment and you don't know whether you've pronounced them correctly. They commented that using the Zoomfly 3 for training really did help them improve strength and endurance. Wearing a heavier shoe, obviously, is going to kind of train the body to accept that kind of heavy weight shoe and then when you race in your kind of much lighter racing shoes you're going to get a real advantage. It's kind of like wearing a heavy rucksack or something while you're training. If you were to train in this one and then race in the next percent you probably feel like you were flying. There's a lot of runners who are a little bit heavier in terms of weight. They found they've really enjoyed this shoe. I've had loads of comments about that. And I think at about £88 at the moment, which is probably about the cheapest you can pick it up for, I think it could be a really good option uh, for those people in that kind of category. I think perhaps being a slightly lighter runner, I just found it a little bit too kind of clunky, a little bit too cushioned perhaps, I don't know. There are going to be some that do benefit from that increased midsole foam, but for me, the Zoom Fly 3, ultimately in terms of the problems with the fit and just the overall increase in weight, over the series means it's a miss. So I've put over a hundred miles into a couple of different pairs of the Vaporfly Next Percent now and I found actually it's a big improvement over the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. I did enjoy the 4% Flyknit, don't get me wrong, I used that for loads of miles, it's about 180 now I've just retired my crimson red pair but I think that they've improved the durability and versatility of this shoe drastically. The foam appears a little bit different aesthetically to the Zoomex foam that's incorporated into the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. There's more of a sheen on the outside of the foam. I haven't experienced any of the tearing or sort of fragmenting of the foam as myself and lots of other runners experienced with the previous iteration of the shoe. As you'll probably know a lot of the time on the sort of outer heel area of the shoe people got lots of issues there with the outer part, the kind of coating of the foam simply flaking away and leaving the exposed foam which then starts to get wet and it starts to degrade very quickly. I mean clearly these rubber sections here have helped. They're much longer, they seem to be more durable. I think perhaps my forms improved somewhat as well as time has gone by. Either way though, the shoe's holding up much, much better than the previous iteration did around about this number of miles. I was a little skeptical about the vapor weave stuff that they used on the next percent initially. It certainly feels odd on first wear when you first put it on. Kind of almost like you're putting your foot into a little bag, but I'm okay with it now. You do get used to it. And after a while, actually, when you start utilizing the shoe on some longer runs, you don't really feel the upper whatsoever. I think with racing shoes, you like to try and keep them clean. You want to get to the start line kind of feeling good about everything you've been doing and certainly a race shoe you want it to look spick and span. I mean who wants a dirty racing shoe right? Perhaps unless you're doing some sort of trail race and it's just going to get muddy within five seconds. I found it super easy to clean this all you need is just a sort of a damp cloth you can remove anything off of the upper there. I think it's a, similar to guitars you know a quick polish once in a while makes all the difference. I'm yet to quite hit the heights in terms of performance that I achieved with the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. A true test of that will be at the end of March when I take on the Oval Half Marathon, see if I can chop a few minutes perhaps off of that time that I achieved last year. That aside though, I have been close to that time on some races with much greater elevation over the course of the last few months. I think if I keep working hard, perhaps this shoe could also enable me to get under that time that I achieved last year. As I write this, the next percent doesn't seem to be all that available now over here in the UK. Nike still has some versions of the Ekaden edition available in certain sizes, but it does seem as if stock is quite low. Anyone would think they're about to launch a new premium race shoe. I wonder what that could be. So for me, the Nike Vaporfly next percent certainly is a hit. Although I have to be honest, it's an exceptionally expensive shoe. If you're able to get some sort of discount, some type of code, student discount, something like that, do try to use it. I bet they will reduce the price of any stock that's hanging around now 
before that Alpha Fly appears on the scene. Okay guys, I hope you've enjoyed this review of Nike's 2019 Running Shoe Series. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button down in the bottom corner, give the video a thumbs up like, make sure you click the bell for notifications, and share it with your friends. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.